Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Welcome to the show, folks. This is Ask the Experts here on Talk Radio 1190. Hope everybody's enjoying their Saturday morning. Joining me on the show now is Mark Underwood of Underwood Law Office. A little bit of holiday spirit to bring in the show today. Before we get started with Mark, UnderwoodLawOffice.com is the website. That's UnderwoodLawOffice.com. 844-UNDERWOOD is the phone number you can reach him at. That's 844-UNDERWOOD. And, of course, uh, his office is located in McKinney, Texas. He's a personal injury attorney and Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. I haven't started my Christmas shopping yet. I need to start my Christmas shopping, but um, we still have about, what, two weeks? Yeah, we got about two weeks, and uh, I guess me and you are similar, Mark, that we always like to push it off to the last very moment. <laughs> when I was younger, I would take the number of presents that I had to buy and the number of minutes I had left on Christmas <laughs> Eve divide the number of presents into the number of minutes, allocate that many minutes to each present, and get it done. <laughs> that's too funny. And, and you know, uh, talking about presents, that's kind of where we're going to go today. But before, I guess, we kind of jump into uh, our uh, topic of discussion, and why don't you tell uh, the listeners out there real quickly uh, about yourself? Well, you know, again, my name is Mark Underwood. I'm a lawyer in McKinney, Texas. I have a law firm that does personal injury law, everything from a car wreck to some of the worst disasters in the country. Um, of course, you know some of those really bad disasters can take years and years and years to handle, but uh, we like doing it. We like representing people, and we like putting smiles on their faces. And uh, the today we're kind of you know it plays into the holiday season. Mark, we're going to talk about if you can get hurt if you get hurt using your Christmas present. What can you do? Is there a possibility for a product liability claim? Great question, Matt. So uh, what we're talking about here is if you get hurt using your Christmas present, what can you do? Um, Or one possibility is a product liability claim. Well, you know, what we're talking about here is really catastrophic injuries, really, really bad injuries, you know, things like, uh, paraplegia, loss of a limb, or death. You know, nobody's looking at uh, presenting a, a product liability claim for for a bruise or a stoved finger. So we're we're talking about really big, serious injury cases. And um, can you make a claim for product liability? In We'll kind of roll with that, and especially this one really pertains to Texas in itself. What are different types of product effects that are recognized under Texas state law? Well, you know, let's let's back up a step, and let's talk about what exactly is a product liability claim. Perfect, perfect. Sorry about that. A product liability claim is a lawsuit where you sue because something that was wrong with a product caused you to get hurt. So let's say you're, you you get a Christmas present, you're using it, and it causes some sort of really serious injury. You know, this could be a problem with the original design of the product, could be a problem with how the product was manufactured, or it could be a problem with um, the instructions that they gave you with the product, whether or not they gave proper warnings. And if you suffer a really serious injury, you might have a product liability claim arising from your Christmas presents. And and I kind of mentioned before, what are what are some of product defects recognized under uh, Texas state law, Mark? So there are basically three different types of products liability claims in Texas and most states. One is for a design defect. And a design defect uh, arises when a product with a defective design hurts someone, uh, even if it's made flawlessly. You know, even if they made it according to the design, it, it still causes an injury. You know, showing a product is dangerous is different from proving that it has a defective design. Uh, um, you know, if the product is obviously dangerous, and it's 
obvious to any reasonable person, the manufacturer probably can't be sued for, for the injuries. So under the Texas Civil Practice and Remedies Code, there's a couple of different elements that a person claiming a product have, has a design defect must show um, to, to win. And you can't just prove it was unsafe. You've got some specific elements you have to prove uh, under design defect. And, and one is that a less dangerous alternative could be used. And that's what's called a, there's a, a reasonable or feasible alternative. Um, number two, using that design, that alternative design would have been reasonable from a financial and technological standpoint. Number three, the alternative design would have kept most of the products use and utility while at the same time reducing a risk of, of injury. And he also must prove that any sort of injuries were not caused by some other sort of reason. Some examples of design defects are a toy that can be easily swallowed by a small child or a type of car that suddenly accelerates for no reason or a gun safety it still, allow, still allows the gun to be fired. And um, the second category is uh, what's called failure to warn. You want to talk about that, Matt? Yeah, failure to warn. Let's, play, let's go into a little bit of that. So um, a failure to warn under Texas law, you know, under Texas law, a product can be defective when the manufacturer does not provide proper warnings and or instructions about its use. For example, if the product has a danger uh, has a danger that's unexpected or unforeseeable when used, the manufacturer must warn about that danger. Also, if the product must be used in a certain way to reduce injury risk, the manufacturer must also provide instructions or warnings. Failure in either type of case can result in a product liability claim. Let me give you some examples. Um, for failure to warn cases. Number one, a birth control drug that causes medical problems or a, a, ch a small child or a toddler's uh, chair that clamps on a table that falls if it's not installed um, um, properly. Or how about a log splitting device that causes a serious injury uh, to the user? One of the failure to warn cases that I did earlier in my career was um, uh, regarding a baby gate. And what had happened was this uh, woman was at home with two twin boys, and she ran out front to get the mail. And when she ran out front to get the mail, the two boys managed to push down one of these uh, rubber uh, plastic baby gates. And one of them... Um, they, they both fell in the water. When the woman returned from getting the mail, she was only out in the front yard for just a few minutes, came back, looked in her, looked for her boys, didn't see them, but looked out in the pool and saw one of the children floating in the pool. Of course, she panicked, ran out there, jumped in the pool, pulled the child out, started performing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, and as she was performing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, realized that she couldn't, um, didn't know where the other child was, where the other twin was, and um, she jumped back in the pool, and it turns out the, the second child was on the bottom of the pool rather than floating on top. So she pulled that child out. Her and her father uh, did CPR on the, on the kids, and the kids were very seriously injured, and they were um, in the hospital for months and months and months, but they survived, thank God. Um, and it, you know, it turns out that twin two-year-old boys are involved in more accidents and more injuries than any other cohort of, uh, of children. And in that case, what we found was this gate was uh, on the box, had pictures of this gate being used outside. And, of course, with it being plastic, if you use this gate outside over time, it, it becomes uh, flimsy and very easy to twist. So these, these boys were able to, to push that gate down, uh, especially the, the two of them working in tandem as twins tend to do. And um, we were able to prove that the baby gate manufacturer should have provided warnings or instructions to not use that gate 
outside uh, in the weather where it was going to be affected. So that, those are failure to warn type cases. The, the kind of the, the third category are, are manufacturing defect cases. You want to you want to hear about that, Matt? Yeah, real quick, and just to reset, Mark, before we jump into it, remember, we are talking with Mark Underwood of Underwood Law Office. It's underwoodlawoffice.com is the website. That's underwoodlawoffice.com. 844-UNDERWOOD is the number you can reach him at, 844-UNDERWOOD. We're talking about if you, and hopefully not the case, but if you do get hurt using your Christmas present, what you can do, and it kind of plays into a product liability claim, and we're talking about the different types of product liability claim recognized under Texas state law, one being design defects, one being failure to warn, and the last one that we're going to jump into is manufacturing defects. How's that play? Uh, what does that entail, Mark? So the third category is manufacturing defects, and a manufacturing defect is kind of like a chance event and that the defect is not present in every identical product from the manufacturer. And usually those types of defects are, are caused by a lack of quality control during the production process. And um, typically you must uh, have evidence of the product defect. And uh, a lot of times, you know, what the lawyer will do there is they'll compare this particular product to the uh, to exemplars from from the manufacturer to show that you know this product deviated from what the what the norm was. Typical types of manufacturing defect cases are uh, tread separation on tires that can be a manufacturing defect, uh, safety locks on a on a car that do not engage, and um, or a, a faulty handle on a car seat uh, breaks off. So that, that's typically what uh, what you're looking at with a manufacturing defect. It's a type of case where uh, something odd happened in the manufacturing process to cause the product to be defective. And, you know, we're just going to keep rolling right through things and, and discuss a little bit more. Remember, folks... We're talking with Mark Underwood, and we had talked. We had discussed that uh, door baby door incident on a previous show, and pretty uh, very thoroughly. So, if anybody ever wants to hear that, just reach out. We'd love to share that with you as well. Uh, it was a very interesting, and the good news is, uh, like he said, uh, things ended up uh, being a happy ending, which is great. If, if somebody is in this situation, Mark, first, I guess the question would be. Can you sue the person who gave you the gift? <laughs> <laughs> which well, is which is kind of interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. It gives me a little bit of a chuckle, and, and probably not. So, it, you know, if all they did was get an give you an item in a box, uh, or they, you know, they went to the store and and bought a present, wrapped it, gave it to you, you probably can't sue them for that because there's no way of for them to have known that there was something wrong with the product inside of the box. However, there's all, you know, when it comes to lawyers, there's always a however, right? <laughs> and, you know, however, it's a long stretched out however. Yeah. Um, however, it, it is possible if they had a, a role in assembling the product. For example, let's say um, a bicycle is bought for Christmas as a present and the, the person assembles the bicycle incorrectly um, or, uh, you know, it was partially designed wrong and partially assembled wrong. Uh, you could possibly sue the person who gave you the gift if they had a role in uh, assembling the product or altering the product in, in any way. And, you know, keep in mind what we're talking about here is, is the insurance of the person because typically uh, these cases are – very expensive cases to pursue. There are lots of experts hired, and um, the injuries again are, are typically catastrophic. So you're not really talking about suing the individual. You're probably talking about suing their insurance company. So can you sue the person that gave you the present? You know, it might not get you invited back to Christmas if you do yeah. sue them. Um, the answer is probably not, unless they had a, a role in uh, assembling the product. Yeah, I was going to say the tough one about that is I'm assuming. 
more often than not, that person is probably a family member or somebody you're close with <laughs> if you're getting a gift from them. So uh, that might be a tough situation, right? Yeah. So it's probably not probably not happening that you're suing the person that gave you the gift. What about the store, Mark? Can you sue the store where the gift was bought at? How's that play out? You can. Um, the store doesn't need to have affected the product. You know, if they're responsible for putting it into the stream of commerce, uh, the store probably can be a defendant. Uh, you know, uh, in addition to like the improper assembly of a bike that we were talking about, another possible liability is, exam- is example is improper storage, especially for something like food items. Yeah. Uh, if they didn't keep the food at the right temperature, you got sick, maybe even a loved one died, you could definitely have a claim against the store uh, that sold sold the food we're talking with mark underwood of underwood law office today remember 844 underwood is the number that's 844 underwood underwoodlawoffice.com is the website that's underwoodlawoffice.com he's a personal injury attorney here in the dfw his office is located in mckinney texas always a pleasure having on the show and uh covering an extensive list of things today we're talking in regards to well if you get hurt using a christmas present what can you do and a product liability claim is usually the way it tends to play out now we 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 talked about suing the person that gave you the gift obviously that's probably not a a a, a legitimate way to go about it maybe uh, suing the store like you mentioned just now but uh, the last one is the manufacturer can you sue the manufacturer, Mark? Yes, you can, and that's typically where these cases yeah. head because we're, we're typically top, talking about a design defect or a manufacturing defect, and that's usually a, a result of the manufacturer's action. So you can sue the manufacturer when there's something wrong with the product. For example, a toy might have an electrical problem that causes a fire, burns down the house, um, you know, you see that on space heaters um, more than rarely. Um, you know, something with a, a very sharp edge that causes a very severe cut or injury mm-hmm. could be a, a possibility. You know, manufacturers are typically responsible for these types of safety issues. You, you see and, those little uh, hoverboards or those little uh, wheel things. I forget what the proper name is, but they've uh, had a history of catching on fire. So that's one of them, too, that... Uh, really causes some problems that could uh, do some a- in- damage, I guess you could so, say. So, yeah, talking about the hoverboards, that's a, that's a good example. So, you know, if the hoverboard catches fire and it causes serious damages, you probably do have a product liability claim there. Yeah. However, if, you know, you are riding the hover- <laughs> hoverboard and yeah. you fall off and break your wrist, you probably don't have a claim. Because yeah. You know, under that, under those circumstances, the the product and uh, the condition of the product is is open and obvious. So, um, you know, if it causes a fire, yes. If it causes you to break your wrist, probably no. That's why you won't see me on one, Mark. I know what's gonna. I know the outcome that's already gonna happen with that. You know, man, I jumped on one of those once, <laughs> and uh, I, I was able to do it, uh, but I could just. I was so out of balance and so tentative that I, I just knew I was going down and yeah. I was going to land on my head and it was not going to be pretty. So one time and one time only well, to learn that I didn't need to be on those things. Uh, pr- props to you for pulling it off, though. Uh, uh, I'd say that's better than I've done. Yeah, it, um, you know, I uh, definitely, you know, and I used to ride a skateboard when I was a kid. Oh, course, there you that go. Was a long, 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 long time ago. Um and um, I just knew that it was not a good idea for me to be on it. I guess to get us get 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 back on to the topic. Long story short, I threw us a little curveball, but the manufacturer itself—that's usually how it plays out. If something, if this situation does arise, right? It, it is, and you know, many times, you know, in this uh, day of worldwide commerce, you, you might have a manufacturer who's in China and a retailer who's in the United States. Yeah. Well, um, under those circumstances, 
since the retailer helped to place the product into the stream of commerce, you might be going after the the retailer and the retailer turning around trying to go after the manufacturer. Um, you know, it's very difficult to just sue a company that's located in, in China and, and selling products directly to the consumer here. But if they're going through a retailer, there's that alternative. Mark, we got a couple more minutes before we wrap up on the show. We'll, we'll, we'll end it with this. If this if you are in this situation, this does happen to you, what can you recover in a product's liability case? So um, in a product's liability case, and, and again, we're typically talking about very severe injuries here, paraplegia. Um, you know, one of the cases we uh, did a long time ago was uh, a rollover from a Toyota 4Runner, and uh, the young woman was a paraplegic as a result of it. Interestingly, after that case is over, she ended up going to uh, the University of Houston for law school and became a lawyer and practiced for about 15 years down in Houston oh, wow. as a lawyer. Um, and uh, she passed away about a year ago. Uh, but that was a, a really uh, turning up a, a very tragic situation into a positive result. But so, you know, typically what you're looking at is past medical bills, future medical bills. Uh, lost wages, future lost wages or, or loss of earning capacity, um, the future, what they call life care plan, you know, what it will take to take care of this person for the um, for the losses that they've uh, sustained over the course of their, their life. Also, it could be a loss of consortium claim for family members who uh, lost the uh, comfort society and companionship with the injured individual, for example, a parent or a, or a wife. So, um, you know, and again, and I, I just can't stress it enough. Typically we're talking about very severe cases, uh, very severe injuries. And, um, but you know, if your Christmas present has injured somebody or injured you or your loved one, and it's a very serious injury, they're like, you know, a, a car rollover. For example, there may be a product liability claim. One more time, folks. Remember, it is Mark Underwood of Underwood Law Office. UnderwoodLawOffice.com is the website. That's UnderwoodLawOffice.com. It's 844 Underwood is the phone number you could reach him at. That's 844 Underwood. He's a personal injury attorney in McKinney, Texas, is where his office is located at. Always a pleasure having him on the show. Mark. I guess it's uh, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but I appreciate you joining us on Ask the Experts today, and it's all, it really is a pleasure having you on the show. Yep, it's always a lot of fun to be on here, and well, I want to wish you a Merry Merry Christmas and all your listeners out there. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. Well, right back at you, sir. Uh, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays. Hope you and your family enjoy the time off. I know you're a busy man. Uh, I, I'm pretty busy myself, so I'm going to enjoy a little bit of time off, Mark. Until next time, my friend, we'll talk soon, okay? Okay, Matt. Thanks ha- Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Another edition of Ask the Experts for this week is in the book. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas coming up here in a couple weeks. We'll talk to you again same time next week on Ask the Experts on Talk Radio 1190.